Razor, how are we doing this week? I'm a little annoyed today, seeing as my kids have been home all afternoon and there's not a drop of snow or rain in oh, my driveway you, right now. They had, um, the, they had the, the school canceled today, huh? The early release at 1120 really put a crimp in my ability to get anything done today. So ah, well, we, we appreciate you uh, jumping on with us here, even with, uh, with kids uh, <laughs> all over the house. Uh, how, how many are running around? How many kids do you have? I have three kids, and then each of them needs to have a friend or someone kicking her. So it's it's a zoo in my house. Right? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sitting outside on the porch. I only have the one, and that, that feels like enough of a zoo, uh, if we're being <laughs> honest. So I, I'm curious, Razor, while you have a moment here with kids uh, uh, swinging from ceiling fans uh, and things like this. I got all the time in the world for you, Joe. I all the time in the world now. We're good. Keep me out here. <laughs> I, am, I am curious how you felt the Bruins weekend went. Was it a good or a bad weekend for the Bees. They fell behind against the Red Wings a couple of times. They lost on Sunday. They did also become the first team to 50 wins. They did clinch a playoff spot. Was it a good or a bad weekend for the Bruins? I can't say it's a good weekend. Um, I, 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 I want to. I, I'm so I'm going to say bad if you're giving me just those two words. I think it's just an expected weekend at this point. It's after the trade deadline. You have your team. All the excitement of that wears off and. And you're just trying to get up for these afternoon games against teams that are out of the playoffs or on the verge of getting out of the playoffs and they're giving it their last-ditch effort. So uh, th- certainly you could hear the coaches talk about needing more from them. Uh, but, I, but I just think it's, it's a lot for these guys to really be highly motivated for an afternoon game in Detroit at this time of the season. Razor, were you surprised to hear Jim Montgomery be uh, publicly critical of his team's effort a couple games back now uh, and saying that they didn't really present with the effort that he expected, particularly on the offensive side? I think it's a good time for him to crack the whip just a little bit or at least get get some attention. I, we talk so much about the accountability in the room and, and the players take so, Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand take care of those things, but but it's also important for the coach at this time of year to, you know, yes, we can take our foot off the gas a little bit. We can have a rotation of our lineup. We don't have to go a million miles an hour, but we also can't let it slip to the point of not being able to get it back. And, and I think it's the, the, the details, the power play, the special teams was not good this weekend. That's, that's easy to look at it and say that needs to be fixed and we have to nip that one in the bud as well. Razor, I'm not even that concerned about the losses. I'm with you. I think that they can afford to have a couple of losses here and there. What I'm more concerned concerned with was the turnovers. Uh, You mentioned some of them, but Grizzlick, Bergeron, Pasternak Pasternak the other day, Krejci the other day, uh, the four-on-one, the shorthanded goals. We we all have watched this team for years. We've seen them run out of gas before. Are you at all concerned that these are maybe uh, elements of fatigue catching up to them here? Mental fatigue, I, I don't see it being a physical fatigue thing. I, I think, again, we're going to see more after this road trip. Yeah, everyone played this weekend because they are going on the road. They all had to go on the road anyways. If you're going to go, you might, you know, you're going to want to play. Uh, I think we're going to see more of a forward rotation like we're seeing on the back end in the next coming weeks on the weekends. But, but no, it is mental fatigue. It's, it's, it, it's difficult to be this far ahead of everybody and not take a little bit of – uh, an extra chance uh, on the power play, you make an extra pass or not being quite as sure with the puck in the neutral zone, trying to make the extra play like they have all season. And most of the time it's worked, but the last games it hasn't as well. And I think, I think you see them get to a simpler game over this week and, and it's starting tonight. I, I, th- I would fully expect them to have an, a really good first period after having three or four, not so good. Oh, we're talking to Andrew Raycroft of Nesson. He joins us every Tuesday here on Jones and Mego with Arcan. Let me ask you, I, I, I'm less concerned about where Dmitry Orlov fits in. I, I think he's he's going to fit whether it's with, you know, McAvoy or wherever. I, I think he's going to be okay. I'm surprised how much tinkering Montgomery has done with Bertuzzi. You know, he's broken up the Krejci line at one point. Bertuzzi finished last game up with uh, with Bergeron and Marchand. I'm surprised how much he's bounced around. Where do you think his best fit is, and what's your read on what Montgomery's doing with those different line combinations? That's great homework, great question. Oh, thank you. I'm, thank you. You're I, that's, welcome. That's the first, I, that's that's the first that time in five weeks you said it. Wow, yes. <laughs> that is, I like that one. Thank you. Because I'm not sure. Pocky Jones, I'm, I'm, I, that is it. 
I think with the Hall and Felino injuries, you're you're giving that one a little bit of a pass. I, but it still feel I, I can't imagine them going into Game One and breaking up the check line and and obviously Patrice Brad and and DeBrus. that that one's not going anywhere for sure. And I, and I really feel like they're going with Zach on the second line, no matter what the matchup is. So so to me, he slots in on that third line. Now when Taylor Hall comes back, does he move over to the right? Or where does Frederick go? So, so no, there is a lot of tinkering, and, and I don't think we get the answer until at least Hall comes back and maybe even Felino with what they actually do. But I think it's been, out of all the players, Bertuzzi coming into this lineup and coming in at the deadline, Bertuzzi's going, you know, he's got the toughest job finding his way because Hathaway's the fourth line right winger, Orlov's a top defenseman who can play with any of them. So, it is it is interesting and it's something to continue to watch where he can find chemistry that Tyler Bertuzzi can find chemistry. There's been a lot uh, razor out there made of Orlov and what he can bring to the power play for the Bruins. Uh, aside from his addition, what else can you see them do to kind of inject a little more life into that? Even in this time where it's might be hard to approach all these games with the urgency that their coach might want them to. Well, I think I think it does help that they're struggling the way they are. I think that will motivate this group. You're not going to you're not going to switch it up, and you're not taking Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand and Dave Pasternak off the top power play. The power play units don't really get flipped in the National Hockey League. There's just not enough players. Now, sometimes you might see the second unit go out first, but even in that scenario, it doesn't really happen often. So. It's upon the players to figure it out. It's upon the coaching staff to go through video and figure out what they can do better or if they can rotate guys on the ice. But you're not going to change the lineup beyond Orlov, Lindholm, McAvoy, that being the, the, the one defenseman on that top unit. What's your impression of Jeremy Swayman lately? He's had a couple of nights that I feel like maybe weren't up to his normal snuff. Do you feel the same way? Uh, I So the game against Edmonton, I didn't love the puck handle before the third goal. The third goal that sometimes goes in, it was a moving screen in front of him. He tried to take space. It found a hole. But but it was more the play leading up to that that didn't get the puck out of the zone. And then I think that, I think he was kind of left on a bit of an island in Detroit. But any time you lose two in a row on this team especially, and the guy in front of you has lost four games all season long up until game 67, it's, it's like it, you, you go and nitpick at it, but so, so, no, I'm not concerned about his game. I think he's lost two games in a row that, that were not necessarily great circumstances for a goaltender to be in. But, of course, on this team, losing two in a row, losing three in a row is, is something that, that you can put a microscope on. But if there's nothing in his game that I see flipping. I think it's just a matter of, of getting back and getting a couple good breaks next game. All right, well, Razor, uh, before we let you go, I want you to know that I am going to uh, I'm going to work very hard on trying to get another satisfactory question for you next week, okay? I'm going to I'm going to make sure I do my homework and really really like grind tape so I have another thumbs up question Let's that, stick with like one right. one a month. That maybe. was a good that was a really good feeling, I got to be honest. You're on the bandwagon. You're really like it's been impressive here of late. You're it really has. like it between has been. the bandwagon, you're still on the bandwagon. <laughs> there was no negativity there. Nope. You're still going. A couple losses, That's and me. you're staying with it. I love it. I'm impressed. Hockey Jones, thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday, Razor. Love it. You got it. All right, Andrew Raycroft.